All right, so some of you may have a ball python. Some of you may be thinking about picking up a snake as a pet. And let me tell you, there's pretty much only one thing on the menu when it comes to snakes, and that is rats and mice. With the rare exceptions, some garter snakes will actually eat fish, and some reticulated pythons will actually take some birds. But pretty much universally, rats and mice are the only thing on the menu. Some people try other rodents like uh, hamsters or gerbils, African soft furs, but I'd say pretty much universally just because rats and mice are so highly productive and pretty much commercially available, rats and mice are pretty much the staple for snakes as a food item. And in this video, I kind of want to go over how to keep those rats and mice as long as possible in the freezer. And I know a lot of times we'll talk about animal husbandry as far as growing up the rats and mice, the food and the water and the bedding. And then once you, you euthanize them, you usually euthanize them with CO2, put them in the freezer, and then it's a race against time, you know, before you can use them for your snake. They definitely have uh, pretty much a shelf life from there. And what I do is I process my own rodents with CO2 and I put them in the freezer. Last year I was buying an incredible amount of hopper mice. This mice, this, this year I am ahead of the game. I have all these hopper mice that I froze from my collection. As soon as they hit this hopper mice size, I've been popping them in the freezer and getting them ready for my ball python hatchlings. This year I'll probably have between 70 and 100 plus hatchlings if everything goes well. And this uh, pinstripe pine starting to choke me out. This is a beautiful snake. If I get him for him, my neck, take a look at this. This guy is off food at the moment, but normally when he eats, he eats rats. He is a beautiful, beautiful snake. This is a pin pied I bought from Vesper Ball Pythons a couple years ago, and she still is not up to size. I've been waiting for quite a while. She's just a little stickler for, for fasting and fasting. One of these years, I'm going to get her up to size. I'm actually going to breed her and produce some more pinstripe pieds. It's a pretty cool snake. So I have some other rodents I kind of wanted to show you here. This is kind of uh, like a smaller... Uh, rat, this is like a rat pup, a rat crawler that I pretty much go from from the mouse hoppers and then pretty much these medium rats, what I do with these is, you know, these are pretty much what I feed my, my mid-range to adult ball pythons. The adult ball pythons will actually take uh, rats that are quite a bit bigger than this, but anything kind of in that range to the really large. What I do is I actually sell them to the pet store. And let me tell you, rats in the freezer is like money in the bank. The only thing, you just don't want to keep them in there too long because they do have a shelf life. All right, so you'll notice that I've switched snakes. This is my albino female. I also ran those rodents up to the freezer. I definitely don't want those rodents to thaw out because once you thaw out a rodent, you really can't refreeze them again. As a matter of fact, some of these big rodent uh, places that all they do is breed and they ship out the frozen and rodents they say if you run out of dry ice in the shipment to your house they'll actually replace that shipment because once the rodent thaws out you're really not supposed to freeze them again and I'd say probably the number one question that I've had you know probably over the years is hey I tried to you know thaw out this rat or this mouse I tried to feed my snake my snake won't eat can I refreeze that rodent and I say definitely not you don't want to refreeze them and uh, it's you know it's, it's pretty much like any other food item you could freeze it pretty much once once you thaw it out it's, it's really not safe to freeze it again for for consumption so I'd say the number one thing as far as is keeping your frozen rodents in the freezer for an extended period of time number one you need the proper freezer and this is where a lot of people make the mistake that you know they go up in their kitchen open the door and they throw some some frozen rodents on the pizza <laughs> and walk away and let me tell you that is usually not not the right kind of freezer that you need for long-term storage of, of really any frozen item that's that's meant for consumption. So what you really need is one that is not frost-free. You need a manual defrost freezer. As a matter of fact, manual defrost freezers are a lot cheaper than the defrost. If you have a defrost freezer, what actually happens is the way it keeps it defrosted is it, it brings it down to freezing temperature and then it slightly thaws 
the 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 temperature so it brings it up above freezing and all the pretty much all the ice crystal melts and just brings it up just enough to where the the frost will melt and it won't build up and then it'll freeze again so you have these cycles going back and forth between freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and you really can't notice it when you pull the food out because it's so quick and it happens so fast that it, it doesn't really completely thaw the food items it just thaws it just enough to keep the frost from building up <laughs> i got this snake going up my sleeve what's this crazy snake doing anyway so so what you really need is the proper freezer and i actually just ordered a freezer from Home Depot. They're going to deliver it this Thursday. It's a big 20 cubic foot manual defrost freezer. And, and let me tell you, if you have an old freezer, there's a night and day difference between the new and the old. The new freezers are extremely energy efficient, so that doesn't take a lot of energy. As a matter of fact, if, if you went to the store and you bought a brand new freezer and you replaced your old one, I can almost guarantee it within a few years, you're going to save enough on electricity to cover the cost of that freezer versus using an older freezer say for example if you got one off of craigslist <laughs> and that's why everyone kind of gets rid of them on craigslist because they know this is takes so much electricity to run that it, uh, it's really not worth keeping around and as a matter of fact the freezer that i bought has really thick installations it's the biggest kind of the fanciest one i think it was only like I think it was about $750 delivered with tax and everything, so it's it's pretty expensive. But let me tell you, the the insulation is so thick on that freezer that uh, they say if you unplug it from the wall, it can go two days before stuff starts thawing out. And that's really what you want, really good insulation. Because let me tell you, if you have that good of insulation, you're not going to spend hardly anything on electricity to keep those temperatures down you know in the freezing point and the other thing is is i also keep uh, uh black angus cattle i was actually thinking of processing one this year and if i actually did process one of my my big angus cows uh I'd, it'd probably fill about four freezers so i'm kind of you know thinking about uh, kind of that road too i'm gonna have to get some more freezers not only for my rats but for my cows and, and if you think about it you know breeding animals for their meat is kind of completely different than you know if, if you're growing up in the city and you never see the chicken or the cow or the rat and, and it, to me it seems like you know if you're at a restaurant and you, you can't eat all your food and you're throwing that food away what you're really doing is if you throw away a piece of chicken you know that chicken uh, sacrificed its life to feed you <laughs> and for me for me on this side of the farm kind of being you know seeing the chicken and the cow and everything it's it I almost place more of a value on trying to keep the food item uh, as, as, as long as possible you don't want to throw anything like that away because it's you know, to me I'd rather keep you know, I'd rather keep the chicken or the cow and the beef in the freezer, you know, versus, you know, if you're throwing away a head of lettuce or like a cantaloupe or something like that. It doesn't really have as much value as a meat item where, you know, an animal actually sacrificed their life to put food on the table. And it's a little bit different thinking, I think, than coming from the, the meat farmer, the as, as far as the, the, and I know there's a lot of people that are <laughs> actually against raising any kind of meat for the table and it's it's kind of an interesting ethical dilemma and you don't really it doesn't really hit home until you're on this side and you're actually processing the rats or processing the chickens or thinking about sending your cows to slaughter and let me tell you it's a completely different game when you're on this side I think you get a little more emotionally involved in the food that's actually uh, showing up on your table so I'd say that's probably uh, the number one is getting the right type of freezer to extend the shelf life as far as possible. The other thing is, as far as buying from one of these big, huge Rodent Pro shops, you know, there's there's Rodent Pro, there's a whole bunch of other shops that, that are online that you can just go on there and order your rodents and they'll ship them right to your door, no problem at all. And the problem is, is I kind of have a problem with it, is, is when I get the rodents, I don't have a date on the bag that shows when this rodent was euthanized and placed in the freezer. So I don't really know how old 
that rat is. As a matter of fact, I've had a lot of people say, hey, I fed this snake my rat, uh, uh, and the rat exploded when he was coiling it. And I think it's I think it's pretty much because that rat is too old. It's been in the freezer too long, and let me tell you, if you get some, some rodents that kind of explode when they're eating, it's not a good sight. It's, it's, it's pretty, uh, I say it's kind of the grisly part of keeping snakes is, is seeing something like that. And really, I think it comes down to knowing the shell life of your rodents and not going beyond it and a lot of times it's it's keeping them in the wrong kind of freezer or keeping them for too long in the freezer and I would highly recommend if you go to one of these big rodent places online you make a big order uh, a lot of times a lot of people will get together and share the same order to kind of cut back on the shipping so you're not you know getting hit on that shipping cost because you're paying for a big box full of dry ice to be shipped to your door, and let me tell you, the shipping is what really kills you, <clears throat> unless you have quite a few rodents in the order. And usually when I make an order, I'll spend like two or three hundred dollars, and then it's definitely worth it. But if you're just looking for a smaller order, sometimes the shipping can be worse than <laughs> the amount of ro rodents that you actually get. And then that's kind of the other option is maybe you can get together with one of these pet stores and when they're making an order online maybe you can go in with them or if you can find a breeder like I do like you know I breed rats and mice there's a lot of people that I've sold to over the years that pretty much bought for me pretty much all my rats and mice that I had extra and I had one guy pretty much bought everything and then he got out of ball pythons and now I sell pretty much only to the pet stores and I'm kind of thinking about doing some shows selling some frozen rodents but a lot of these shows actually have these big guys come in with these huge coolers and there's regulations in the shows that say nobody can sell frozen rats and mice except these guys <laughs> which is so I think it's kind of crazy that they kind of corner the market and they set it up that way but I think it's kind of interesting that certain products you know kind of uh, corner the market in some of these shows and uh, it's I don't know if it's <laughs> if it's if it's the right thing to do it kind of keeps the little guy from from progressing and I kind of like to sell some of these frozen ro rodents but of course you know you're always thinking about the shelf life and if you have a small guy coming selling pretty much what you'd consider a food item at the shows then you really can't control how long this rodent has been in the freezer how long it's been stored and if it's been stored in the proper freezer so another thing to extend shelf life for these rodents I would say is to try to keep most of the air out of the bag as much as possible and I know a lot of people talk about vacuum sealing rodents and I've actually tried it before if you vacuum seal a rodent what you really want to do is you want to freeze the rodent first before you vacuum seal because I vacuum sealed some fresh killed rodents and let me tell you it's not very pretty it's you definitely want to freeze them first and they say if you vacuum seal you can actually double the shelf life of your rodents in the freezer so typically I'd say the average shelf life of just a bag of rodents in the freezer is probably six to eight months and probably double that if you're vacuum sealing and it really depends how much air you have in there and I've had some bags kind of pop open in the freezer and you get the air from the freezer going in there and it seems like you get a little frosty inside the bag and you definitely don't want that so you want to make sure your bags are sealed really well and make sure there's as little air as possible and then after they're frozen you can consider vacuum sealing. The only thing with vacuum sealing is um, it's a little hard to get them out because you kind of have to pop the seal and then you know you kind of have to put them in another bag after you get them out of the, the vacuum seal. So I'd say that's pretty much it as far as taking care of your rodents. Make sure that uh, you, you watch the shelf life. As a matter of fact, if you get them from one of these, if you get them from a pet store, one of these big stores, I would actually write the date on the bag so you know when you got it, just so you get a, an idea of how long you can keep them in the freezer. Make sure you have a manual defrost freezer and make sure that you get most of the air out of the bag as much as possible. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.